John hastily bade his wife farewell, exclaiming, Jasmine, I'm going out. I'll be back late, and slammed the front door loudly. He was in a hurry to meet his classmates. They had finally managed to get a large group together this year, and they planned to meet at the cafe. As he walked towards the cafe, the phone rang. It was his close friend Mary. Mary asked if he would be there soon, as he was in danger of missing all the fun. John assured her that he was on his way with Robert. They had graduated together 10 years ago. After graduation, each had spent a few years gaining experience in their respective fields before taking a job with a reputable company. Even though they were co-workers, their friendship remained strong, and each was always ready to support the other. But there was one trait in Robert's character that did not give John a rest. He was unfaithful, despite the fact that he was married. This behavior extended even to married women. When Robert was asked about this, he revealed that he never loved his wife and only married her because of the opportunities her wealthy father provided. He provided them with a spacious apartment and a car. The lack of any feelings for his wife made him look for love elsewhere. John, on the other hand, was happily married. His wife provided him with constant care, a cozy home, real stability, and peace of mind. Although they had occasional disagreements, they understood that conflict was a normal part of any relationship. In short, Robert's friend had a habit of constantly starting new romantic relationships, which he willingly and thoroughly shared with John. At first, Robert tried to explain to his friend that there was nothing wrong with what he was doing. But in the end, he realized that it was pointless and decided to accept his friend's lifestyle choice. John only asked not to talk about future affairs because it was against his own moral principles. Even though John avoided discussing Robert's personal life, he still saw his friend transform when he had a new lover. His eyes sparkled, his confidence grew, and he acted like a conqueror. Sometimes it seemed that these conquests were the sole purpose of his friend's existence. One day at work, John received a flood of orders from clients and was completely absorbed in processing them. He didn't immediately notice that a secretary came to his desk and informed him that his boss was requesting his presence in the office, indicating that something was wrong. Although the secretary looked concerned, John reassured him with a cheerful reply, suggesting that nothing was wrong. With a sense of curiosity, he headed toward his boss's office. When he entered, he was greeted by a broad smile from his boss, who invited him to sit across from him. After exchanging general pleasantries, the boss finally got down to business. John, our regular customer, couldn't help but praise you. In addition, the manager informed me that you have been diligent in fulfilling all your plans. In my opinion, you deserve a promotion more than anyone else. The man couldn't contain his joy. He had been looking forward to this moment. And now finally, everything was falling into place. After expressing his gratitude for his boss's trust, he headed to his workplace. Robert immediately approached him and asked, what did the boss say? I've been promoted. Can you imagine how long it took me to accomplish this? John glowed with happiness. Robert, on the other hand, didn't take the news so happily. But we started working here at the same time, didn't we? Why haven't I been promoted too? He complained. I don't think I'm doing any worse work than you. John looked sadly at his friend. He remembered how often Robert spent time at work on personal matters and took frequent smoke breaks. Because of this, he often didn't have enough time to complete his daily tasks. Robert continued to stare at him, demanding an explanation for the injustice he felt. Listen, friend, John began cautiously, choosing his words carefully. Maybe you should spend less time on dating sites during work hours. Remember when you missed some rush orders because of that? Irritated, Robert replied, so you're saying I don't do anything here? Sounds like you've already become a big shot. John sighed heavily, realizing that he was the only one who saw the situation clearly. Once again, his words were twisted by his friend, who instantly went on the defensive. Despite his attempts to smooth things over, his comrade preferred to walk away and curtail the conversation. He didn't know then that the seed of jealousy his friend harbored would grow into something much bigger. The resentment was festering inside him. 
After a few days, the friends managed to patch things up. Although apologies were not Robert's strong suit, this time she made one. He acknowledged that John's promotion was fair and admitted that her behavior had gone beyond the call of duty. To celebrate John's success, they made plans to visit their favorite bar that weekend. When they finally met, John couldn't help but notice how his friend had changed. Robert looked even more smug than usual and was full of unusual energy. It was obvious that something new was going on in his life, and this time it had to do with a woman. Showing curiosity, John politely asked about her. Robert, smiling slyly, replied vaguely, Oh, just another bored housewife. He went on to express surprise that their husbands were oblivious to the situation. Blind as bats, all of them, he grinned, taking the sip from his glass. Silence ensued before Robert added with the look of an experienced observer. People are so immersed in work and the pursuit of money that they don't notice what's happening right under their noses. They deserve what's happening to them. Those words sent a shiver down John's spine. He looked at his friend in shock. Could anyone really be so cold and heartless? At least these new qualities of Robert's didn't seem to be directed against their friendship. The rest of the evening passed in easy conversation, but there was a distinct shift in his friend's demeanor. John noticed the change, but didn't dwell on it. Over the next few weeks, John began missing work more and more often. His new position, while full of exciting opportunities, also came with increased demands. While he struggled to adjust, his wife didn't share his enthusiasm for the promotion. Their relationship began to suffer. Jasmine no longer cooked dinner or suggested weekend activities. John saw the effects of this. They no longer ate together, discussed their plans, and sometimes even went to bed separately. One day John managed to leave work early. He went to his favorite Asian restaurant and took food to go, hoping to have a quiet dinner with his wife that night. However, Jasmine was not home. Confused, he waited, assuming she should be back by now. Calls to her cell phone went unanswered. It was turned off or out of range. All he could do was wait. An hour later, his wife came home, and to her surprise, John was standing in the hallway. With a hard expression on his face, he asked, Where have you been? She nonchalantly replied, Oh, I was just out with some friends. Confused, John continued, Why was your phone off? I've been trying to reach you. Finally, Jasmine raised her head and met her husband's gaze. Her eyes were cold. I wanted some peace and quiet. Is that a crime? You're never around anyway. Do I always have to wait for you like a puppy? John couldn't believe how different his wife had changed. She had always been soft and kind, and now she seemed like a stranger. The next day, John was still troubled by the sudden change in his wife's behavior. He found it difficult to concentrate at work, and by the end of the day he was still bogged down in paperwork. His co-worker Robert, on the other hand, said goodbye and went home. Fifteen minutes later, John was called into his boss's office. The boss had a meeting and John needed to complete an urgent task. These documents need to be reviewed by a lawyer. You can save the rest for tomorrow, the boss said. John felt relieved. He was glad for the opportunity to relax. Taking the paperwork and address, he headed to the law firm's office, which was across the street from a small hotel. As John approached the building, he noticed a car parked nearby. It was definitely Robert's car. What a coincidence. His friend must be meeting someone here, John thought, grinning to himself. But after a few seconds, the smile faded from his face. Robert was the first to get out of the car and made his way to the front passenger door where he opened it and extended his hand to the lady. To John's surprise as he watched, his wife Jasmine got out of the car. Time seemed to slow down, and John decided to engage them on the spot, but his legs were weak and unsteady. Instead, he found another means of retaliation, stealthily taking pictures of the couple as they walked toward the hotel entrance. As they disappeared inside, John exhaled and tried to pull himself together, realizing that his friend Robert was not who he claimed to be, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Remembering the trader's address, 
John drove to Robert's house in an upscale neighborhood. He called Alice, Robert's wife, who welcomed him warmly. Without delay, John revealed to Alice the truth about her husband's treacherous actions. Thanks to Alice's fiery temper and influential parents, John was sure that the actions of his former friend would not go unpunished. The consequences unfolded rapidly. When Robert returned home that evening, he was met by Alice, who was waiting for him with her packed belongings. Robert suddenly found himself without a place to live. Alice's influential father had arranged for the man to be fired from his job, leaving him unemployed for the next six months. As a result, Robert had to curb his spending and change his lifestyle. Eventually, too, John ended his marriage to his wife after a lengthy conversation with Jasmine to understand the reasons for their separation. Despite his attempts to make sense of the situation, Jasmine was unable to give a clear explanation and only expressed her emotions through tears. John struggled to come to terms with the sudden collapse of their seemingly happy marriage. Although there was a possibility that his wife was remorseful for her actions, John was indifferent and felt that the trust between them was irrevocably broken.